Hey folks, um, so today I want to actually do a quick review of the um, brand new CyberSync Transmitter CST Model 2, uh, which is right over here. The CST2 uh, actually replaces the, the, their older model, which is the CST1, um, with a few improvements. Um, so uh, let's go over all those improvements that uh, they've claimed they've done. Um, so it arrives in this little box, which is um, like when you open the packaging, it's very plain and simple. You know, it's just the uh, transmitter itself and a uh, small manual over here, which explains how to pair, you know, your transmitters with all different kinds of um, of uh, their other offerings, the receivers and the uh, the cyber commander. Um, model which I have over here um, So basically for me, I use the cyber commander um, to set all my flash parameters uh, for my uh, Paul buff uh, what's it called uh, Let's see for the Einstein 640 um, I have two Einstein lights um, sometimes I use one um, but this is what I use to control the lights and of course, I set the uh, triggering frequency to a channel that uh, is uh, less affected um, in my area. So, as you can see, for now, I set the channel at 14. And when I have the channel set, um, I just go to my uh, CST trigger, which I mount onto my uh, camera. And I set the channel to channel 14. Uh, you can see. It's actually pointing between 13 and 15, which is 14. Um, so when I actually fire my flash, uh, I mean fire my um, camera, the uh, flash would trigger. Uh, when the flash triggers, uh, the red light you know, lights up. Um, and this little CST has been serving me pretty good for the most, uh, for the most time. The, there are a few instances where it didn't work is because I think the design of the um, of the hot shoe mount um, with my old Canon 60 the uh, hot shoe mount when, when I actually mounted on my hot shoe sometimes it doesn't trigger the flash um, I thought it was a battery but it's actually not it's I think because this ball sometimes gets recessed to inside of the um, of the plastic casing and uh, so it doesn't contact um, it, it doesn't protrude long enough to to be able to contact the uh, hot shoe um, connector on the camera so it doesn't trigger which uh, was kind of frustrating at times when you are actually on a deadline and trying to get stuff done um, and apparently from their website they claim the uh, the new design actually fixes this issue um, so from actually from the look of the or actually from the feel of the ball on the bottom it actually sorry for my cat um, let's see get a close shot you can see it's protruding a lot more than the um, the CST2 protruding a lot more than the old CST1 or the CST model um, and I think that's one of the improvements let me move my cat Sorry, Plato. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> that is one improvement. And uh, what else they've done is, um, I guess it's kind of also big because with the old CST, you have the really clumsy, really big, the um, CR2450 batteries. And you can see it's really thick. And it's really hard to get because not a lot of places carry those. Um, I have to order them in batch online um, just to have a few back uh, backups because the battery kind of dies fairly quickly. Um, with the new CST2, they've uh, switched from the old clumsy and hard to find battery to the standard. Let me try to get it out. to the standard CR2032, which is very common and you can, oops, you can get it from all the uh, drugstores, the CVS, or you can order them online uh, for a really good price. I usually just order 
a pack of 10 online and, and set it over there because I have some other things that uses this battery like my uh, remote control um, for my car. Um, so that is definitely one huge plus. The battery is much easier to find and according to their website claims this battery lasts a full year without ever have to be replaced even under normal everyday use um, and I think that to me is definitely another huge plus because the old battery um, when I use it regularly uh, I would say um, it would die within one to three months during normal use um, which is which is not as good so if, if it actually can last the CS2 can last for a year I'll be really pleased and I'll come back and update the review because I've only had the CS2 for a few days so I can't really claim um, the battery life whether it's good or bad um, but so, so battery is one of the improvements um, and Another thing is because they've used a newer battery, so the design uh, of the uh, new transmitter is much more slimmer. As you can see, it's almost, I would say, they reduced the overall thickness by at least uh, 40%. Um, there's still a little area that's protruding, uh, that's a battery door, um, but the, at the bottom part, it's really slim. Um, and the uh, transmitter antenna has been designed from round to kind of a, uh, a rectangular shape. Um, and I think in terms of the RF performance, it should all be same. So, I mean, the RF performance on the old Cyber 6 CSD is already fantastic. I can trigger the flash from really, really far away. Uh, and if you look closely, the, the RF module contained within each model is exactly the same. So uh, that's why the RF performance is going to be staying the same. The only thing different is the uh, efficiency of the battery, uh, which, is, which lasts a lot longer. Um, and the design of the hot shoe, right now it feels a little more robust when I actually put it on the camera. And uh, uh, another small change is before with CyberSync CST1, when you put it on the hot shoe, um, you put it on this way. So it's kind of dumb because when you need to adjust, you have to flip your camera over here and adjust the frequencies or do the triggering, the flash triggering. Uh, with the new CS2, you actually, CST2, you actually mount it directly like this to the camera. So it's really easy to quickly reach your channels and adjust the channel settings. Um, because sometimes when you shoot in um, in downtown areas, there's a lot of, uh, of interference, and uh, uh, for that you have to try to change your RF channels quite frequently because some RF channel just simply doesn't work; it doesn't trigger the flash at all. Um, so uh, have the ability to quickly switch the channels uh, because of the mounting position. It's it's another plus. Um, uh, of course, talking about switching channels, um, I want to say the new design of the uh, channel switching knob is, is a lot better. Um, as you can see, the before, uh, there's just a white knob with a little tiny black, um, I guess, line um, in the knob that's uh, supposed to tell you that this is pointing to the right channel. Which at times, especially when you're working under, um, under stress, it's it's... It's confusing and uh, your assistant probably doesn't know which channel it is because it's just a white line with a tiny tiny um, black dot and the new one as you can see uh, they actually painted the arrow red which is awesome because um, right now it's much more easier to see and uh, instead of um, skipping numbers um, they've tried to use a more precise precise line to indicate where um, the channel is exactly so um, I think the, the new design is much easier to see and to um, to see which channel you're on for example right now I'm on channel 15 um, but since my cyber commander is set to 14 so I can just switch to 14 really easily um, the test button it's kind of same as the uh, old one they are they're all protruding about 
Sam and it's it's not hard to press. Um, and I think another thing I want to complain about, um, besides all the good things they've done, is the battery door design. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of protruding, and uh, especially when you have to mount it in onto the camera. Um, when you push it onto the camera, it's fine because you're not, you know, touching the battery door. But when you're actually trying to remove it from the hot shoe, uh, maybe when you need to mount a, a on-camera flash uh, and you try to remove the CST too, like you do it like this. And a lot of times, when you just lightly tap it, try to take it out, the battery door. The battery door, as you can see, it's already falling out. So, like, it's it's not secure. It's really easy to be, I would say, triggered uh, when you just touch it lightly. And because of the motion of the hand, you often want to grab the uh, CyberSync CST2 like this. And every time you do anything heavy, you naturally just you can naturally by accident just push it up like that. It's the battery door is not locked, it's not secure, um, like the older model, which is really hard to remove. I mean, it's it's a good thing. It's hard to remove by accident, but it's really too easy to remove when you actually need to. You just, you know, you just grab the little groove and, and pull it out like that. Um, so I think that's, that's one thing I don't like about the CST2. Um, everything else, it works a lot more. It works a lot better than the uh, old CST models, which um, I think I'll keep as a backup. And uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask me and uh, I'll try to answer it for you um, as much as possible since I've been using um, Paul Buff CyberSync products for, I would say, four or five years now. Um, I really love their um, their wireless offerings, which, which is kind of really easy to use. Um, and thank you so much, guys. Hope you have a good day.